Hey guys, another day, another project. Um, I have a mid-century modern walnut dresser for you guys today that I'm going to be um, refinishing some of and just sort of bringing it back to its former glory. As you can see here, there are some scratches and marks and all that good stuff. There's a big one here. I really hope I'm going to be able to get it out. But this is pretty much, I want to refinish the top. I'm going to wipe it all down because some of the marks on the drawers may be scratches, but other ones may just be dirt and I can sort of like get it off. So I'm going to try my best to get everything that I can off through cleaning it. And then I am going to tackle sanding the top. At least it's a very flat surface. There's no um, lipped edges, so it should be pretty smooth sailing hopefully I can get all the scratches off and uh, maybe this won't take too too long we'll see so let's get started doing all that and uh, let's clean this thing up So the drawer here is broken off, so we're just gonna pop it back in by following where the nails were and sort of just hammering it back in. We're also gonna add a little bit of glue just to secure it a little bit more. So some of the drawers, um, their sliders have um, missing screws and uh, they're a little loose and one of the bars for the drawers is actually off of its um, little rail so we're just going to fix that up now. So some of these stoppers, um, as you can see the screws are in them, came off on the uh, rails here on the drawers so some of them were just like on the rails. So we're just gonna reattach them onto the drawers because they're supposed to be attached to the drawers. Okay, so we're just trying to find screws that are the right size to fit in this without going through. It looks like they may have replaced the screws at some point because these ones are different and they're a lot longer and they go through the drawer. So we're trying our luck with some extra screws that we have. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my orbital sander uh, with some 80 grit sandpaper, um, and then I'm gonna go over it with some 100 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna do the whole entire top as well as both the sides. Hey guys, so I just wanted to come in here and say that this footage was taken in the summer and I have learned a lot more since then so while I said that I was going to go in with an 80 and then a hundred um, now I would actually go with the same thing but I would add in a 150 and then a 220 after that it still turned out really really good but I definitely know now to go for more grits just to avoid any sort of scratching or anything like that all right, so I flipped the dresser on its side so that um, I can easily sand this side. I'm standing up on my deck and the dresser is like literally up and down um, on the ground right now because I know that I'm not gonna be able to hold the sander upright like this the whole entire time because it's heavy. So this will make my life a lot easier. This finish was very difficult to get through. These days I use a carbide scraper to scrape off very thick finishes. You can use stripper, but I find it a bit too messy. So that's just a tip. All right, so I have the whole entire uh, side sanded down, but I still have to get in right here with um, some sandpaper so that I can get out all the stuff that's by this lip, which is a tedious thing to do, but you have to get it or else when you apply your new finish, your new color, it's gonna show and it looks ugly. So yeah, I'm gonna do that by hand. Here. 
This is where I did the sanding and this is where I still have to do it. So I'm just going like this. This part is really tedious, but eventually you get it done. So that's how it looks right now. I'm just gonna finish this all up. So now I'm just uh, sanding this part because it's like attached to this so I want it all to be the same color so I'm just going along and it's coming off pretty easily. You have to be very careful when sanding these pieces because it's very thin and as you can see later on I did go through the veneer here so just be very mindful. Also just to mention I wasn't wearing a mask in these clips. I hadn't been doing this for very very long so now I do so please make sure you wear a mask to protect your lungs from all the sanding dust and the old finishes of these old vintage pieces. All right, it's the next day. I have everything set up here to um, start applying the oil. Um, I just have the drawers set up on the table there. And the dresser is over here like this. I just have it all set up underneath of a tent. Um, if you're working outside, having shade is the best thing. We actually have this um, cantilever umbrella that I found on the side of the road. We do have like a patio umbrella, but it's not very big. It's just for the table. But this one, oh my God, guys, when you put it up, it's so big and it creates a nice shady area on the grass, which is where I was filming yesterday. But I also have this tent, which takes up a lot of room on the deck. So we're going to take this down and I'm going to mostly be using the other umbrella. But yeah, it gives me a nice little work area for when I have to do stuff outside, like oiling and stuff like that. All right, so I have my Danish oil in uh, golden oak here. I like to use this color when I don't want to deposit any sort of stain. I just want to keep the natural color because this color is so light that it doesn't really do anything to the wood color, but you still provide the same finish that you get from Danish oil. And then I have some teak oil here. Uh, some gloves, a sponge, a rag to wipe away the excess, and just a glass to put it in to dip the sponge into. So the reason I'm using two different finishes here is because sometimes when I put teak oil on, I don't like how certain areas stay sort of tacky and sticky even when you wipe away the excess. And I feel like it dries sort of too quickly for you to even have a chance to wipe away the excess. And then if there's too little, there's areas that are matte and areas that are shiny. So I don't always like the finish on this one. So, but I do like the protection. So I'm going to try something different and I'm going to do just one coat of the teak oil. And instead of letting it sit for five to 10 minutes and applying more, I'm going to apply a coat of Danish oil on top and then wipe away the excess. So we'll see how it goes. And hopefully it gives me more of an even finish without any sort of sticky areas or areas that look like there's more product left behind. So we're going to give it a try and uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have some of the teak oil and just going to dip it in. Okay, so I just wanted to say that I have stopped using teak oil altogether because it has a very viscous sort of thick sticky formula and I don't like it that much so I use Danish oil almost exclusively now and it works much better for me. Just follow the directions on the can and it has worked perfect for me every single time. I even use it on teak so both teak and walnut and it works perfectly. I'm just going to take a cloth and just go over it. These days I always finish my walnut pieces with a couple coats of oil-based wipe on poly in a satin finish just for some extra protection. I know Danish oil has a varnish and a sealant in it but it is not very strong and sometimes I just want extra protection so that it'll last even longer for my customers. All right now that the top is done I'm going to do the two sides and the remaining uh, bare wood just the same way and then I'm going to come back and do a layer of Danish oil on the top just the same way also. Um, there's really nothing different about how I'm applying it. I'm just going in even strokes trying not to put too much or too little making sure to fill all the areas. Um, but yeah I just wiped it away because my experience with teak oil is that less is more 
um, and you do need to put a second coat on anyways so if the first coat is really thin it's good um, but yeah I'm just gonna do that and then I will show you how it's looking with uh, both of those on all right so I've applied all of the oil to the dust so you saw me apply the first layer of teak oil so I just wiped that all down and then I went over it with a layer of Danish oil and I made sure to wipe it all away right away because I didn't want those weird spots when you looked at it from the side that reflect where the product sort of didn't sink in enough and it dries really weirdly so I just made sure to wipe it all away right away but yeah it looks really really nice the sides are a slightly different color which is sort of cool they're way more warm toned so this is how the sides looking which is super cool and I just did that the exact same way I did the top did the little pieces here and this is the other side it's also super cool because it has like all of these really awesome grains in it you just gotta love that so cute but yeah I'm just gonna let this bad boy sit here just dry I think I'm gonna attempt to make um, a paint color that matches this color so that I can fill in all of the scratches and stuff like that and also I would love to paint on I would love to paint on the corner that's missing and also over here I would just like to make it all blend and look like sort of like it was never there so that's the goal I'm gonna see what I can do with that all right so I moved inside because it's such a humid day outside so I am just working on the drawer fronts right now but they're a little bit discolored and have some cloudy areas just from age so what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of steel wool um, this is probably like a medium grade. It's definitely not the finest, but it's not the coarsest either. And I'm just rubbing down the drawer fronts. And then I'm just wiping away the dust with a cloth and I'm using some gel stains to sort of freshen up the finish. All right, so I'm just taking my pecan gel stain, just this one by Verathane. So it has this like reddish orangey color, which I really like for worn toned woods like walnut because or like um, anything that has this kind of color on it. Sometimes oak is finished in this color. I did an MCM desk with oak and I did the same thing. So I'm just putting on a very, very thin layer and it almost just tints the surface just enough that it revitalizes the finish a little bit. So I'm just using a foam brush and I'm just evenly going over Just like this, just spreading it out. You don't need too much. And then I'm just taking a cloth and I'm just wiping away the excess. And it still leaves behind a little bit of a tint, but this just ensures there's not too much of the reddish color left behind. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking some paint so I mixed up some paint and I got like this color here and I'm filling in all of the imperfections in the drawers with this color and it's sort of just making it um, look a lot better. This paint tends to dry a little bit matte. This is oil paint by the way. I'm just taking a little bit on this small brush and I'm just going in like so. And it's working pretty well. This is a pretty big spot. All the other spots were pretty small. So yeah, just like that. See, this is the drawer that we had to hammer and glue back in so it lifted the veneer a little bit here it's 
So I've already done a couple of drawers and I just have this one left and that one. So I'm almost done. And I think after that, I might try and make a color out of these colors that matches the body of the dresser and touch up little things on there too. Okay, so I'm back outside and I'm just attempting to see how well this matches. So let's try this. It's actually a really good match, which I'm happy about. Holy guys, it is hot. It is really, really hot out, but I am persevering. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's still a bit lighter, but what I was going to do, I might darken it up a bit. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to see, but I didn't want it to be too dark because I can add a little bit more of the black in just to see. What it does. Okay, let's see. Maybe just that little bit of darkness. All right, so that's what we have. I mean, not too bad. So I'm just gonna touch up any little spots that I think need a little bit of touching up and hopefully it works out. So this is what we ended up with. I think the color is pretty good. I also went along the bottom and I just filled in that bar down there because that wasn't um, walnut veneer. I touched up the, because this wasn't a walnut veneer, when I sanded it down, it was really white. So it didn't, um, it wasn't the same color as the rest of the wood. So I just went over it with the colors I was using to fill it. It's a little bit on the red side, but I really don't think you're even gonna see it that much because the drawers sit on it. I touched up this bottom bar here with a little bit of a dark brown color because there was some like white sort of nicks and stuff along the bottom and I also touched up the legs. So yeah, looking pretty good all together. Not too shabby. This one's really matching though. I'm really happy with how the corner turned out. All right, so it's a couple of days later and I'm just getting ready to stage the walnut dresser. This is it set up in my staging area. So I just got a little jewelry box, perfume, and a plant, and two pictures. And just set it up just like that. So it looks pretty good. So I'm going to take a couple photos.